Welcome to another episode of Practice Makes You Better, where in this particular series, I'm tackling the category of attitude, where I'm going to be doing a 30 question mock test, breaking it down for you, giving you hints, tips and tricks along the way to give you the best possible chance of passing first time. I'm going to be using my app of choice, Driving Test Success. So let's waste no more time and jump onto the iPad. You're on a one way street and want to turn right. Where should you position your vehicle when there are two lanes? So the key bit to this, you're on a one way street. So all the traffic is going in one direction. You want to turn right. You need to have right in your answer. In the left hand lane, no. In either lane, depending on the traffic, again, no. In the right hand lane, so you've got right hand lane, you're turning right from the question, it links that's the answer. And this is really important for those of you taking driving lessons. If you're on a one way street and the examiner says to you to turn right, you need to be in the right hand lane. If you do the conventional way of staying left of center, which is what you normally do when you turn around a two way road, you're going to fail your driving test for this. And just left of center, which is a normal position for turning right, stay there, you're going to fail your test. What will happen if you follow this vehicle too closely? Again, if you're using the app that I'm using, Driving Test Success, you can enlarge the image. I always suggest you read the question, look at the image, because sometimes you can get some clues, what I call golden nuggets from there. So with this, you're following a lorry. If you follow too close, you can't see. So you want to stay well back so you can see the road clearly ahead. And also there's a saying, if you can't see my wing mirrors, I can't see you. So if you can't see the lorry, in this case, wing mirrors, then they can't see you either. So your fuel consumption will be increased. No, your brakes will overheat. No, your engine will overheat. No, your view ahead will be reduced. Yes. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two second rule? So the conditions, the key is good and dry. So when checking your gap from the vehicle in front, yes, that's what the two second rule is. So you're leaving a two second gap between you and the vehicle in front because it's good and dry. If it was wet, then you're leaving a four second gap. And if it's ice and snow, you're leaving up to 10 times longer. Before we start the engine after it's stalled, no. When traffic lights change to green, no. Before using mirror signal maneuver routine, again, no. You're driving along this road. What should you do if the red car cuts in close in front of you? So again, look at the image. The red car is just cutting you up basically in simple terms. Um, stay calm, <laughs> drop back to leave a correct separation distance, yes. Just drop back, let them get on with it, stay calm. Don't let somebody spoil your day just because they've done something stupid. Um, flash your headlight several times, no. Give a long blast on the horn, no. Accelerate to get close to the red car, again, no. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? If you're driving behind a large vehicle, it's going to signal left and it's going to move out to the right. You need to stay behind it because the lorry's got to swing out to get around the corner comfortably. When you guys drive in a car, there'll still be a meter from the curb. So that's not going to make much difference to you, but it does make a difference to the lorry. So overtake on the right of it, no. Drive on, keep into the left, no. Slow down and let the vehicle turn, which is going to be, yes, that's the safest option. And hold your speed and sound your horn again, no. You're driving a car that has a diesel engine. What can a loose filler cap on your fuel tank cause? A filler cap is just where you pour your diesel in and you lock it to make sure it doesn't spill out when you're going over speed humps, potholes, that type of thing. That's what a filler cap is. Again, people get confused with that. So it's just like a water bottle. You fill it up, cork it tightly so it doesn't spill out. It can make the engine difficult to start, no. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption, no. It can make the road slippery for other road users, yes, because you don't want it to spill out. In it can increase the level of exhaust emissions, again, no. You're approaching a zebra crossing. What should you do if pedestrians are waiting to cross? If you're approaching a zebra crossing and pedestrians are waiting to cross, you should be slowing down and be prepared to stop. That's a simple answer, safest answer. Give way to older and infirm people only, no. Slow down and prepare to stop, yes. 
wave at them to cross the road. No, you should never wave anybody across the road and use the headlights to indicate they can cross. Again, no. I know you see people doing that, flashing their headlights, but again, that is not the official term in the highway call for flashing the headlights. Which type of crossing allows cyclists to ride across while pedestrians are also crossing? So the key there is cyclist crossing and pedestrian crossing. So cyclist is one, pedestrians is two, and you're looking for a two can. That's what it stands for. Two can cross at the same time. So puffing crossing, no. Two can, yes. Don't need to go any further because there's not going to be a better answer than that. So it's two can. Two can cross at the same time. What should you do if a vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction? It's similar to that red car cutting you up. If, a, if the car pulls out in front of you, just stay calm, relax, let it get on its merry way. Um, accelerate past it immediately, no. Swerve past in sand your horn, no. Slow down and be ready to stop, yes. Stay calm. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind it, no. You're approaching a red light at a puffing crossing, so the light's red. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? Right, it's a puffing. Puffing is sensors. I have done a video with this and I'll leave the link up here somewhere. So puffing are sensors. That light's only going to change when the pedestrians are fully crossed. When you start to edge forward on the crossing, no. When the driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing, no. When the pedestrian pushes the button on the far side of the crossing, no. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing, so that's the only time it's going to change back. And the next colours are red and amber, just in case you didn't know. Um, so puffins are sensors. It senses when people are fully crossed or waiting to cross. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing? So pelican is the only one that has a flashing sequence. And if it's flashing, you've got to give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. First one out. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross, no. S stop and wait for the green light. On a pelican, you don't have to wait for the green light. You can go on a flashing amber as long as no one is still on the crossing. And stop and wait for the red light again, no. You're driving at night on an unlit road. What should you do if you're following another vehicle? So you're driving at night and it's unlit. So all you want to do, and it says you're following another vehicle. Let me just make sure. Yep, you're following another vehicle. So what you want to do is use your dipped headlights, which means you're not going to dazzle the other vehicle. Just because it's unlit, the vehicle in front has lights and you can use that for guidance. So flash your headlights, no. Switch off your headlights, no. Use full beam. Full beam is what you would use if it was just you on the unlit road. Because there's other road users on there or you're following another vehicle, you wouldn't use your full beam because you'll dazzle them, in other words, blind them. In this case, it's going to be used dipped headlights. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? Your car, the reason for this is because your car's a signal. If you're staying to the left, i.e. a meter from the curb, you're technically driving straight. And if you move to the right, that indicates you're looking to turn right. That's why you position your car to the right nice and early. So your car is also a signal as well as the indicators. So to help other road users know what you intend to do, yeah, by positioning your car nice and early. To give a better view into the road that you're joining, no. To allow drivers to pass you on the right, no. To allow other drivers to pull out in front of you, again, no. You're being overtaken by a long, heavy, laden lorry. What should you do if it's taking a long time for it to overtake? What you want to do is slow down, allow the lorry to pass and fill in the gap. Because if you keep your speed and you stay roughly the same as the lorry, if it has to come in because someone's coming the other way, trust me, it's going to choose them over you and you're never going to win the battle with a lorry. So always make sure you just slow down, let the lorry in, not a problem. Right, change directions, no. Speed up, no. Hold your speed, no. Definitely slow down, let the lorry in. You're traveling along a single track road. There's a passing place on the right. What should you do if you see a vehicle coming towards you? So single track, single track just means that there's room for one car up or down. So someone's got to give way. Because the passing place is on your right, you really want to stop opposite the passing place. So you're staying on the left, 
which is your side of the road, and you're stopping opposite the passing place to make the road as wide as possible. So stopping for passing place, no. Continue along for single track road, no. Move over onto the verge, no. Wait opposite the passing place, yes, because you're making the road as wide as possible. That's the correct answer. When should you use your vehicle's horn? Your horn and lights are the same thing. Um, you only use your horn or lights to warn of your presence, or to warn other people of your presence. That's when you use your horn or your lights, as in flashing. To alert others to your presence, yes. To greet other road users, no. That's what you see people do with the horn, um, not the horn, flash their lights to sort of say, yeah, um, I'm letting you go. Um, to allow you the right of way, again, no. To signal your annoyance, no. You're approaching an unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with the junction? So it's unmarked. You should be dealing with it with caution or go carefully because if it's unmarked, nobody's got priority in this situation. Accelerate and keep them to the middle, no. Accelerate and look to the left, no. Slow down and keep to the right, no. As much as you've got to slow down, this is keep to the right. I don't, that doesn't make sense why you would keep to the right. But slow down and look both ways is going to be the better option. So it's got to slow down in there, but it's look both ways rather than just keep to the right. So that's the safest one out of the two slow downs. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if a driver behind is falling very closely? If we're in a line of traffic, slow down gradually and sort of let the car in front pull away so you've got more space to play around with if the car in front stops suddenly so you're looking for something along those lines slow down gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front yeah it's the first one out but always read the other answers just in case there's one better with more information ignore the driver behind and continue to travel the same but you can't ignore the driver behind you've got to be aware of what's happening around you full stop so you can't ignore it Signal left and wave a driver behind to come past. Again, no. Move over to a position just left or centre of the road. Left or centre is not the correct driving position. It's a metre from the curb. So again, answer to that one's no. Which instrument panel warning light shows that headlights are on main beam? Main beam, let me just go through this one. Top left is your hazard lights. Um, top right is your... Um, Handbrake light, main beam is your bottom left corner, and obviously with the arrow facing left is your indicator. So it's your bottom left, as in your main beam. Who should obey diamond shaped traffic signs? This sign is for trams. A lot of questions are coming up on the theory test about trams, mainly on the real test rather than in the theory test. Uh, mock test should I say but in a real theory test based on the feedback we get from our pupils um, there's a lot of tram questions so make sure you're up to date with your tram questions and answers and um, this is a tram it's as simple as that so all we're going to do is look for tram which is the bottom one what style of driving causes increased risk to everyone um, what style of driving is just competitive racing that's always going to cause a danger to other road users basically um, responsible, no. Defensive, no. Considerate, no. Competitive, yes. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? If they're herding sheep and ask you to stop, it's slow down, be prepared to stop. Simple as that. Um, don't overthink this one. Ignore them as they have no authority. No. Stop and switch off your engine, yeah. They're not road trained, so you really want to just comply. Simple as that. Continue on, but drive slowly, no. Try to get past quickly, no. On a road where trams operate, again trams, um, which vehicle would be most at risk from tram lines? Right, this one says which vehicles will be most at risk from tram lines? It's going to be cyclists. Tram lines are grooved, they're not flat, so it's possible for the wheels to get stuck in the tracks and trams can't steer, so if they're going to hit you, they're going to hit you, where a car driver can swerve. On that situation so it's going to be cyclists so lorries no buses no cars no cyclists yes 
What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following the vehicle on a wet road? This is similar to the question that we had earlier on. In terms of that two second gap when it was good and dry, it's now wet, so it's now gonna be four seconds. One second, no, four seconds, yes. Two seconds, no, three seconds, no. I will add, all you need to know is two seconds when it's dry, four seconds when it's wet, and up to 10 times longer when it's ice and snow. Why should you never wave people across at a pedestrian crossing? You may want to let them cross, but the car or bike coming down to the side of you may not. So always stop and let them decide if it's safe for themselves to cross. So it's safer for you to carry on, no. They, not, they may not be ready to cross, no. They may not be looking, no. Another vehicle may be coming, yes. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Right, the key words there is you're in a traffic queue or traffic jam and it's night time. The common thing to do is just sit there with the foot brake on, but the problem with that is brake lights are red, they're bright and they're intense. At night, it really, really is bright. So you can blind other road users. That's what dazzle means for theory test wise. So you can dazzle other road users. So ideally, Use your handbrake, come off the foot brake so not to blind drivers behind. That's what the answer we're looking for is. So keep your foot on the foot brake. No, that's what we want to avoid. Use your parking brake, i.e. your handbrake, and come off the foot brake and release the foot brake, yes. Use your parking brake and foot brake together. You shouldn't be using a handbrake and parking brake together. There's no point or no need. And balance the clutch with the accelerator. And again, no, because you're in a queue of traffic. Clutch says go when you're at the buying point, accelerate goes go faster, you're in a queue of traffic, you never want to go or go faster in traffic jams. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? That's your doctor's car. So I have done a video with the beacons. Again, I'll leave it up here somewhere so you can go and watch that video. But beacons, um, doctor's cars is green. So all we're looking for is um, doctor's cars. Um, Road gritter, no. Ambulance, no. Fire engines, no. Doctor's cars is what we're looking for. Why is it dangerous to drive too close to the vehicle ahead? If you drive too close, there's two reasons. One, if they stop suddenly, you're going to have to stop suddenly. And the most common, safest answer is because you can't see the road ahead. Ideally, you want to see the road ahead so you can make your own decisions rather than they slow down, you slow down. You're better off knowing why they're slowing down before they slow down. And that's your hazard perception, by the way. Um, your, view of the road ahead, your view of the road ahead will be restricted, yes. Your mirrors will need adjusting, no. Your engine will overheat, no. Your sat nav will be confused, and again, no. When should you leave a two second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? As we know from the previous question, two second gap is when it's dry. When it's dry, first one out. When it's icy, when it's foggy, when it's raining, and again, all knows. What should you do to avoid fuel spillage? Right, this is a similar question that we had before with a filler cap. And I keep saying in the Practice Makes You Better series, if you understand the question, understand the answer, it doesn't make a difference how they spin it, you're going to be fine with the fairy test on the big day. This is just a filler cap question, so just make sure it's securely fastened, simple as. I'll just read the question again. What should you do to avoid fuel spillage? Check that your filler cap is securely fastened first one out. But let's read the others. Check that your fuel gauge is working, no. Check that your tank is only three quarters full, no. Check that you use a locking filler cap. You don't have to use a locking filler cap because modern day cars don't always have locking filler caps. You just have to make sure whatever it is that you've got to use is fastened. So there you have another category ticked off. All you've got to do is remember with the theory test generally is it's all about the safety factor. So don't overthink some of the questions. Some of the answers are very simple, but sometimes you guys go into too much detail and overthink it and talk yourself out of the correct answer. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community on Discord where you can get help with your theory test. Any questions that you are struggling with, you can post a screenshot in there ask questions, be motivated by the other students in there, and I will give you the best help I possibly can. 
directly to you rather than just a generic answers on the videos that you are watching. If you like this video and got benefit from it, like, comment, definitely subscribe, share it with your friends so they have the best possible chance of passing their fairy test first time as well. YouTube's gonna show you a video here, I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which video is relevant to you and I will catch you in the next video.